everybody. Uh, thank you for being here. Uh, hopefully everybody enjoyed their weekend. Uh, busy week. Um, let's get into the numbers. We'll go over uh, some of the data, some of the things we're seeing. Uh, we'll go into some in-depth details on uh, some of the county budget challenges as we got more information today. Uh, and then uh, we'll take some questions. Uh, this virus is real, and I think it's just important that people understand uh, we've made tremendous strides with the virus, uh, but it's a killer. And uh, we lost two members of our community over the last 24 hours, uh, a male in his 80s and a female in her 70s. Uh, certainly, let's think about them and their families and everyone we've lost uh, throughout COVID. Uh, related to COVID and not related to COVID as well. Uh, to date, in our county, we have lost 187 of our neighbors uh, since this pandemic started. So it's just a sobering reality of how lethal this virus is and how it preys on our most vulnerable. Uh, looking at testing and new cases, uh, since Friday, we've averaged 1,262 tests uh, per day in Onondaga County. Uh, we continue to uh, test in a robust way, uh, proactively going into communities throughout our county. Over the last three days, our positive infection rate related to community spread. Again, we're doing this. We're going to do a three-day average on this because this is the randomness of the infection. By keeping the community spread numbers below one and going in the right direction, that's how we hope to box in this virus and hopefully at some point uh, weakening it uh, greatly. Uh, our three-day average, 0.47. Uh, so that's very good. Uh, under one, uh, and this is what we need to do. We need, we need that number to be under 1% as we uh, do this. Uh, universal testing continues to uh, be at the Syracuse Community Health Center at 9 to 5 on weekdays. Uh, it's a holiday weekend, so uh, testing will not be open at the Syracuse Community Health Center, certainly through physician offices, urgent care sites, and or uh, potentially if you're receiving medical treatment uh, at a hospital as well over the weekend. But going into that, uh, if you're looking to get tested, uh, please do that this week. Uh, today we reported in our control room our regional testing numbers since Friday. Again, our mandate 775 tests a day for, for our region. Over the weekend, we averaged uh, 1,738 tests uh, per day, three-day total, 5,213 tests. So uh, I think our, uh, I saw some of the governor's numbers related to the region uh, for yesterday's infection rate. I think it was 0.5 around there, so uh, very good numbers uh, related to that. Uh, executive order number 15. Uh, over the past three and a half months, we learned a lot about COVID. One of our biggest takeaways is the faster we can move and contact trace and quarantine and isolate, the better we get. Think about it this way. For every 100 cases we have, we know there will be 15 new cases just based off of household contacts alone. So we need to keep that uh, number limited. Uh, and when you think about it, uh, we need to be able to have access to information with potential contacts. Uh, this virus is lethal when it gets in facilities. Uh, we've seen this happen recently again. We've seen this happen through our senior uh, facilities, our nursing homes and assisted living facilities. Uh, so I signed an executive order 15 requiring all employers to provide their employee roster with contact information to the Onondaga County Health Department if one or more employees test positive. Uh, this will allow our contact tracers and our health department to identify staff that may have been working with uh, the uh, employee who was infected. We will reach out to these staff and then we will quickly encourage testing, whether through your primary care provider or at the Syracuse Community Health Center in the event we feel that uh, there is potential outbreak at a facility. We will go to the facility and test everyone. Uh, we have not seen that, with the exception of the Apple production facility out in Oswego County. 
uh, but it's important that we get in front of this. And it's also important that people remember if you're sick or you have any symptoms, uh, please stay home and get tested. Uh, that's what's important here. We can't have one person going to work, not feeling well, work in close proximity to others, even if you're wearing masks, that, that's, that's no 100% guarantee. Next thing we know, we have three or four employees from the same business. And then we know from those three or four employees, we'll probably get uh, another household contact case. So we need to uh, have our business community work with us on this. I know they will. Uh, and so that we continue to make tremendous progress. Looking at hospitalizations, 34 in the hospital, 8% uh, of our active cases. Uh, we know that there's nine individuals that are waiting uh, to go back to their homes. Uh, they live in nursing homes. They need to test negative for COVID-19 to go back to, the, uh, to their places of residence. Uh, they no longer need hospital services. They're just in the hospital. So when you look at who uh, is in the hospital from COVID that needs hospital services, the number is 25 of our residents. Uh, when we look at our ICU, uh, four in the ICU, uh, that's down two. Unfortunately, that's down two because we lost two neighbors. Uh, but having four people in the ICU is certainly uh, good news when you consider where we've been with that number. Uh, so four folks who are in the ICU, please think of them. Keep them in your thoughts and prayers. Uh, they are in a fight. We look at our numbers of who's in the hospital, 20 Caucasian, seven African American, three of another race, and four who have not shared their demographic information with us. To date, there are 365 people uh, that have been released from the hospitals. When we look at our positive cases since March 16th, we now have 2,708 positive cases. That's 12 new cases. Uh, one is a household contact, two related to a senior living facility, one related to travel, eight community spread. So overall, all pretty solid numbers, uh, and uh, certainly uh, those are the types of numbers that uh, we like to see going in the right direction. We are presently monitoring 443 active cases. That's down 53 cases since yesterday. We had 63 recoveries over the last 24 hours, uh, so 2,083 people have recovered. When we look at the ages uh, of folks, uh, and uh, the sex breakout, uh, 1,595 females, 1,111 males, uh, 156 under 19 years of age, 475 in their 20s, 360 in their 30s, 330 in their 40s, 419 in their 50s, 334 in their 60s, 260 in their 70s, 230 in their 80s, and 144 in their 90s. Uh, certainly a trend related to community spread uh, has been we're seeing younger people more social, not just a trend in our community or in New York State across the country. Uh, and certainly uh, when you're more social and more active in social circles that you're not familiar with, certainly that poses more risk. Uh, so when we look at our, our younger people, we have seen uh, that trend that we kind of saw in the beginning of this where uh, more cases there, although our cases and community spread have been very, very good. Uh, that is a little bit of a trend um, that we just need to continue to watch. And people need to continue to uh, take care of yourself, uh, wear a mask, physically distance, uh, and certainly uh, put yourself in positions to have success. Uh, wanted to go over uh, some information related to uh, the county budget. Uh, received two payments of sales tax today. This morning we received one payment. Uh, very good news, kind of curious news. The payment was six million dollars more than the previous payment at the same time last year. Just before I came over here we received a second payment uh, down uh, three million dollars from the previous payment. Uh, so that kind of made a little bit more sense. Overall though I did not think today we would be talking about uh, payments in the positive when you looked at both payments. So I think that's good. But let's talk about uh, the fiscal realities. I'm going to give everybody a detailed uh, reality of where we are. Uh, in county government, we uh, receive room tax. 
uh, our room tax is probably going to be off $5 million. Uh, we receive gaming money from the Oneida Nation. Uh, that is probably going to be off $2 million. When you look at sales tax, at the end of Q1, we were up 4.6 percent, or essentially we would have gained at least $12 million of new revenue over 2020. Q2, we are currently down 16.6 percent, or we have lost $13.8 million compared to the same period last year. Our year-to-date sales tax is down 7 percent. If that trend holds, that's about $28 million we'll lose over the year. Our budget through year to date related to uh, these payments, uh, $15 million hole. Remember, when we look at our budget, it's not just did we, did we have the same number as last year. We budgeted growth in sales tax. So right now, when you look at uh, the fact that we're down $7 million from room tax, gaming, uh, tax, our uh, sales tax deficit, we're now projecting between 30 and $50 million, uh, in which, which is a little bit better uh, than where we were projecting. Uh, in addition to that, we collect property taxes. We hold school districts, towns, and villages harmless from property tax collection. Uh, certainly in this uh, time, uh, property tax collection is not as strong as it was last year. In addition to this, we have costs related to personnel and overtime during the pandemic. We have costs related to PPE, tests, ventilators, and preparing and planning for worst case scenarios in the pandemic. We have departments that essentially uh, are out of their budget because of the pandemic. For example, our foster care department. Uh, when you shut down the court systems, uh, you cannot move children in and out of foster care situations that are good for the child, uh, but also good for the taxpayer when it comes to the budget. Our, these types of departments with the court systems being shut down, uh, instead of coming in on budget, are now trending $6 million off of budget. And in addition to that, New York State has said repeatedly that they are looking at 20 percent cuts to local governments uh, if things do not happen at the federal level. Uh, they held up payments to the city of Syracuse and other cities with their aim aid of 20 percent last week. That didn't mean that they got cut, but they were held. So we need to take that seriously. What does that mean for our county budget? That means $20 million. So even though we have now uh, are in probably uh, different sales tax scenarios of negative 7 percent, negative 10 percent, negative 15 percent on the year, when you add it all up, our budget problem is still roughly 80 to 100 million dollars total. We've taken some mitigation uh, uh, actions already for that, uh, but the reality is, is uh, if we want to uh, stay whole and continue to be well positioned to fight this virus now and moving into the new year, uh, we need help from our federal partners uh, as much today as we did yesterday. Uh, we just received a little bit of good news. Uh, many people have said, why do you think the sales tax payments may have been better? Remember, this is a moment in time. It's not last week. It's weeks ago. Everybody received stimulus checks. Everybody may have been spending these. We saw consumer spending numbers over that period of time going up. So that may be a shot in the arm for the economy. Uh, that may be temporary, but certainly uh, we are not going to – we cheer good news. Uh, negative 7 percent or negative 10 percent sales tax is better than negative 15 and 20 percent. Uh, saying that, we're going to look at we're, – we're moving uh, where we're still looking at restart, uh, response to the virus, economic recovery. Uh, we're going to talk about later this week some IDA loans that we now have the ability to grant uh, via some state legislation as well as policies we're going to take to really encourage uh, repatriating manufacturing to our community and uh, some heavy incentives to, uh, for companies to look at that. So we'll talk about that further this week. Uh, saying all that, I'll take questions. Your executive order, would you just go through kind of the specifics for that, exactly who it applies to? and? Um, 
will it work retroactively if there were already a cases, if it takes effect now? Just some details. Yeah, so we don't think it really needs to go retroactively because we, we've essentially done what's needed. But it does, Andrew, to your point. If, if we sign the order today, somebody Sunday or Saturday, we, we we're asking for an employee roster. Of course, they're going to have to give it to us. Why do we do that? Uh, not to suggest that some businesses don't want to share the roster. Uh, they may, uh, businesses may get a little nervous. They get a case. What does that mean for their workforce? Um, our job is to come in and box in the virus and then make sure it doesn't turn into a cluster. Or if it does turn into a cluster, box that in, do everything we need to do, and then move on to the next. Uh, the best way to make sure that if you have a positive case at your business that you stay uh, producing and you stay in business is to make sure that you don't lose your workforce. So what's the best way of that? Let us get in there and test everybody. And so that's uh, the goal here is to uh, keep our numbers going in the right direction. Our numbers continue to get, improve and stabilize the way they have. It's tough to get much better, but to stabilize moving forward as more people get into the workplace and more people get back together, uh, that pressure for any delays and restart goes away. The talk about moving backwards goes away, uh, and businesses can keep doing what they're doing to try to make up and catch up the rest of the year. Specifically, is it is it every business in Onondaga County? Yeah, if you have a positive case, Channel right. Nine, get, you, the GM is going to hand over the employee roster. You're all going to be contacted. Uh, specifically, if you are working at the same time as an individual, and w you will be encouraged to get tested. I was at Macy's today. Macy's, even though they're headquartered elsewhere, same thing. If it, if it's this location, this location, not our county. We don't need a whole. Employee roster for well, but that's what I'm saying. Yeah. Even companies headquartered elsewhere, but they operate here. Correct. How about like the Apple factory? It's not in Onondaga County, but there's employees. Yep. If we if we believe that there's county employees there, uh, yes. When Ryan, you mentioned over the weekend that there were um, three hotspots that contributed to caseloads in the last few days. Do you have more details on what those three spots are? Yeah, I, I'm not, I'm not going to go through the names yet. I'll, I'll share the names when we're comfortable sharing the names. But there are two other businesses, roughly five, ten cases each. I'll call that a hot spot moving forward. It's a small cluster. Um, but the, uh, that, that's what we're seeing now. Um, the Apple production uh, that's the facility is in Oswego. That, correct. Are the other two in Onondaga? Uh, I'm not going to get into that yet, Terry, until the health department is, is comfortable with that. Again, our policy the whole time is we haven't talked about specific businesses unless there is a gap of investigation. Uh, and the, uh, it's not clear that there is a gap of investigation. But at the end of the day, once we've done all of our investigation, we're comfortable. We've reached out to all the employees about potentially uh, getting tested. Then I'll probably be free more to talk about it. But right now, we have not been giving a gap of investigation into anything. So the public should feel comf comfortable and confident that we've got everybody in quarantine that needs to be quor in quarantine. When it comes to the malls reopening, specifically Destiny, do we know if they have this new um, f specific filter system that would allow them to eventually reopen? I don't know specifically uh, what their HVAC systems uh, have or do not have. I know there is a business in Pulaski uh, that uh, has done very well, uh, my friend Vinny Labdell and his company. So I know they've been talking. Uh, they, they, they have a solution that helps a lot of these businesses. Uh, whether or not uh, the Pyramid Companies has it, it, this type of system in one or two or three or four of their facilities or not, I'm not sure. Um, as you know, they, that, the Pyramid Companies is here in Syracuse. Mm -hmm. Destiny's here, largest mall in the state, but they have a handful of other malls in New York State that are all in the same position. So um, I like the communication that this is something that may be asked, that will be asked of the malls. I think what would be better is here's what we expect. When you do this, you can open, right? Um, and so that communication hasn't gotten to that point yet. Uh, but putting regulations on business in, in a pandemic is okay, uh, but we need to communicate those regulations uh, and then communicate when they can get operating if they're going to make that investment. What would the cost look like for something? I have like no that? clue what the cost would be for uh, 
a facility that large. Uh, and, and I don't know if you're making the point, but it could be an onerous regulation, but that's a business decision that the business has to make. Uh, and certainly then you get into the spot, you know, what businesses need these malls? Or are malls that much different from other big box retail uh, or anything else? Um, I, I don't know. Is the governor being hypocritical requiring malls only to have this, not big box stores, not even restaurants? No, I, I'm not going to go there, Andrew. Uh, I'll, that's something that the, the private sector companies are going to have to work through. Uh, but certainly, I, I think it's better that a road path to reopening is being starting to be given. That's what we've been asking for. Uh, if the businesses think they're being treated unfairly, uh, or differently, they, they have avenues to, to address those. The governor today uh, talked about New York City and some concerns about indoor dining. Um, when it comes to central New York, do you have any indications that the state is looking again at how that's working here? We've not heard that, Terry, on any of our control room calls. Um, I think you have, uh, New York City is very different. You, you have so many people. Um, if you've been in a restaurant in New York City, usually smaller, kind of on top of everybody anyways. Uh, the, so you've also seen uh, the, the, the larger gatherings in New York City are frequent in every borough. So you, you have a totally different situation there uh, than here. We have not, to my knowledge, I've been not briefed on any, uh, any COVID case in a restaurant uh, since we've uh, been opened in phase two or phase three. Uh, that's not to say it won't happen. At some point it will. Uh, but again, restaurants, certainly those who are tracking who's in their building uh, and at what times are, are in a strong position to be very helpful with us in the event that eventually somebody has COVID that's eating at their facility. Have you gotten any complaints about any social distancing concerns at any business like that? Oh sure, we get complaints every day. There's been, there's been restaurants slash bars we find that have shut down, so because they couldn't control some of their clientele, getting a little too frisky. So um, these things, uh, you know, we get complaints all the time. We've gotten a lot of complaints from big box stores. People have sent me on photographs. Uh, their their corporate headquarters have been put on full notice, and uh, fines are coming. So. Folks, a lot of these big boxes that aren't enforcing mask wearing, uh, I highly suggest you change that uh, because we uh, feel everybody's been put on the proper notice and we're uh, going to take that very seriously. Uh, and when people can specifically produce evidence, uh, like we have had from some of our citizens, that this is not being enforced, then it's easier for us to move forward with that process. How many businesses have been fined? I don't, I'm not sure. I know there's a handful. Um, I, and we can probably get that to you, Trish. It's not, I try to focus on the good behavior, not the bad behavior. I get the bad behavior is fun uh, to talk about, but uh, I can get that. I know there's one specific business, I'm not going to call them out, that, uh, you know, we, we had to deal with. We received lots of complaints. What's the theme of that business? Uh, drinking, eating, dancing. The, all, all the good things, right? All the good things our younger people like doing on weekends now. So with the holiday weekend coming up, um, anything that the county is doing to prepare for bigger groups, you know, having parties that start, you know, maybe from Thursday or Friday into Sunday? Yeah. Uh, so from a physical distancing standpoint, certainly I know the sheriff and his team will have certain jurisdiction that they have to cover and deal with that. Uh, and their policy will probably be what it is now. Uh, certainly, I think the mayor can answer if they're going to do anything differently within uh, the city. And then you have various village and town uh, towns that have police departments that physical distancing falls on them. Uh, our, our government's been dealing with the business complaints, open, not supposed to be open, open, doing something wrong uh, and working through that. So we'll continue to, to do what we can do uh, with that. Certainly, when from that kind of regulatory uh, hand point. Uh, I don't know how many people will be working on the weekend to answer those types of calls. Um, but from the physical distancing standpoint, uh, people should know that you, you know, people can get together now in larger groups. Uh, they should 
do the smart things and wear a mask and protect themselves uh, and enjoy themselves, enjoy the country's birthday. Uh, but you don't want to be, you, you just got to be smart. Nobody knows who's who, who's had contact with who, uh, and we've made so much progress that you just uh, don't want to move backwards or get yourself in a position if you just got back to work where you're sick and you're, you're out two weeks in a quarantine because you're hanging out somewhere that maybe you shouldn't have been. So the gatherings are allowed, 50 people, uh, but uh, certainly we, w we don't think it's a good idea to be in a gathering larger than that. What did y'all talk about um, today on your regional call, and what are your goals for this week? Yeah, I think uh, when you look at the, the regional call, it was a quick call today. Uh, the touched on some of the comments the governor made earlier, and, and uh, you know, hopefully we'll see some progress, Terry, this week with some of these industries that aren't open, opening yet, that they'll, a, a blueprint or a roadmap will be given to them to, to restart. That's important. I think we, uh, we were briefed by DOH on the Westchester uh, small cluster that uh, happened. Again, graduation happens. Looks like some kids got together after graduation in a graduation party. Uh, not a party, maybe a field party. They're partying. And now some of these things happen. Now you got some cases with some kids. So uh, that is not an abnormal example of what high school seniors do in Onondaga County. So it just points out there's risk when you get together. Uh, I think in that case you had some families that came from out of state and some hot spots and that may have been the source of some of those. Uh, so these are the things that are going on. This is the reality of COVID. Uh, I think we need to get things reopened, uh, do it in a safe way, build up that tracing infrastructure. Uh, I spoke about with gyms on pushing for gyms to get open. I said, look at one regulation for gym owners that makes a lot of sense for us is making sure that they have detailed logs of who is in their facility uh, and when for contact tracing. That could go a long way in the event that somebody inevitably goes to the gym and isn't feeling well and uh, they, you know, test positive. So these are things that we talk about. I think for the week, if we could get some of these industries, uh, give them direction as to when they can open up their businesses, um, that would be a good win. Uh, and certainly uh, by the end of the week, uh, we should have, we're getting a better picture flushed out with our own fiscal situation and uh, having an idea of what our, our hole is going to look like under a scenario of state cuts or no state cuts. So uh, we'll continue, we'll start to really pick up the pressure on our federal partners to uh, try to start these discussions about a COVID-4. What's your message to people considering traveling? Obviously there are some states that are dangerous right now. Other states are probably the same status as New York. But what's your message to either people coming into Onondaga County or leaving Onondaga County in the next few weeks? Well, if you're traveling to under the governor's executive order, if you're traveling to a region or a state that uh, meets certain metrics and you come back, you're in a quarantine. And if it was voluntary travel, you're in a quarantine on your time, not the company's time. So people should recognize that the governor has uh, clarified that in his order. So if you had a vacation in Florida, you still want to go because you spent a bunch of money. Um, you go under the governor's executive order. When you come back, two weeks quarantine. Uh, and if you got time at work to take, that's fine, but you got to work that out with your employer. There's risk there. Uh, you don't fall under the sick leave, uh, COVID sick leave legislation there. So I, I think that's something that families should uh, consider. Certainly uh, travel within the state and other areas. If you're going to go anywhere, you should research what's going on and you should be taking the proper precautions that we know works because we've lived through it. Uh, even if you're going into a community that isn't a hot spot but maybe isn't taking the mask wearing serious or, or whatnot, uh, it works. It helps mitigate risk. Uh, everybody should be doing it. How do you plan to enforce that travel ban? It's going to be difficult. There's going to have to be a lot of information sharing going on. Uh, we don't have the infrastructure to reach out to hundreds of thousands of people and ask what their travel plans will be. Uh, so uh, it, it, it's going to be a challenge. Um, and we'll need, when the state knows something, they'll need to share the information with us so we can go out 
and, uh, and work through these things, but it will be very challenging. Even today, the governor is reminding people it's up to local governments to enforce a whole slew of things. Are you, as the leader of one local government, willing to say it's just too hard to do it perfectly? We aren't, we're, we're never going to concede. It's just it's impossible. Uh, we're going to do our best. We're the regional government, uh, and there's there, this, this is a lot to be thrown at us. Uh, and again, in the beginning of the year, we did not have line items for mask wearing patrols or physical distancing patrols or quarantine patrols. Uh, so uh, th there's, these things weren't planned for, nobody planned for them. So we're going to do our best. Uh, the quarantine's especially challenging because uh, how this gets enforced uh, is really on the honor system for the most part. And, how, and that works a lot, right? So uh, a lot of folks that that will reassess. They don't want to put their families potentially in a situation where they can get sick. They'll change plans or move plans if they can. Uh, and if they can't, they'll go on vacation. And I think for the most part, people will do the right thing and they'll put themselves in a quarantine. The other thing, too, is things change. So you may go to a spot that was one week under the metrics of being a hot spot, the next week it's not. So things change. And so, uh, but I think the honor system is going to you know, really be something that we're going to have to rely on to a degree. Can the county do anything at the airport as in educating people or even taking names from a flight from Florida and instructing them specifically what to do? Yeah, I think it's going to get, that's going to get onerous, Andrew. I'm not going to lie. That's going to be a problem. You mentioned that this pandemic has cost you a lot in overtime and PPE and tests and all that. What, how much has that actually cost the county? Yeah, so at least $6 million. We have a request in for reimbursement from FEMA. Uh, we, we don't know if the local share, local share was a verbal waiver at one point. We don't know if that verbal waiver is still good uh, or not good. So uh, out of the six, you're looking at, you know, a million and a half bucks uh, at least, right? Everything we put in, they may not uh, reimburse. Part of this, remember, we, we did child care programs and daycare programs and various things we did to help the community get back to work. Uh, these were all things that cost us money uh, that we needed to do in response to the virus. So we'll, we'll see. We'll let you know on if we get reimbursed uh, fully or not. You talked about the the hot spot that occurred in Westchester County because of that party. Um, as you think about that example, how do you feel about students coming back to Syracuse University and other colleges in, you know, less than two months' time? We need to get them tested. And, and I think we're, we're building up that infrastructure. Uh, we've worked with Upstate on some rapid testing equipment that hopefully we'll be getting in before then. Uh, but we need to use the testing infrastructure get people in, work with the colleges to bring them in on different days so we can get them in, get them quarantined until the results get back, and then we'll know quickly who's coming into the community that has it, whether they're asymptomatic or not symptomatic. So that's what we need to do. Uh, and we need to use the testing we've built up uh, in, in any of these industries as well, uh, convention business. Let's utilize the testing that we have uh, with some of these uh, things that are on the books, if that's going to be a concern. Let's test people. Uh, so uh, that's going to have to be part of life in our community because uh, the education, the ads are so important to our overall economy and who we are as a community. The library is opening anymore? We're assessing uh, when the right time is to move to uh, phase two of the county libraries. Again, people get confused with that. Many of the member libraries in your own communities fall under a separate governance uh, set of rules by the state, so they have to answer those. Uh, our libraries have been open for a takeout uh, type system. Uh, we want to move things along. Budget clarity matters because certainly uh, every service is impacted. Uh, if we have to cut services, including libraries. So all these, all these variables that we have up in the air uh, as, as time comes on, really in the next probably two, two weeks, uh, a lot of these things will, will, will have answers to a lot of these questions, and then we'll be able to uh, make 
you know, affirmative decisions. Have you talked to the sheriff at all about the fireworks issue that seems to be plaguing the whole state? Yeah, uh, the, it's a problem. Uh, some people are confused by what is sold at the stores. What is sold at the stores are sparklers and these other little types of, uh, I don't even want to call them fireworks because they're not. What flies in the air is illegal. So if it's in the air, making a lot of noise, that's illegal. Uh, the sparklers and the other things are legal. So uh, certainly it was good to see the state talking about enforcement uh, with fireworks coming from Pennsylvania. That's the traditional method of how fireworks get into the community, has been for decades. So uh, certainly that's good to hear about that. But again, the, these are things where if you're there when they're going off and law enforcement's there, they can get you. It's, it's tough to enforce after the fact. Other questions? Okay, well thank you very much. We will do this again on Thursday. Uh, hopefully we'll have more information related to restart by then. Uh, and I uh, just want to you know, thank the community. We've been through a lot. When you reflect on where we were in March and where we are today, uh, the progress is amazing. Uh, where we've come, come from and all, everything we've really dealt with together, the, from the pain and the loss of life to uh, responding, restarting, recovering. These are all things that we're going through and we'll need to continue to go through working together. So uh, please be smart and uh, stay safe.